way, my love for photography began with uh, dissolving it. Having understood something um, about the subject matter, but being equally mesmerized or in awe or feeling a mystery, uh, a sense of not fully understanding, whilst also having grasped something of the subject matter, uh, like this knowing, not knowing, uh, that's the place where the photograph, the picture, then can speak much more potently rather than when I've fully understood something and feel certain I know what this is. Hi there. When articles are written about Wolfgang Tillmans, the G word inevitably comes up. I'm really suspicious of the G word, especially when it's used with other words like visionary. I've heard him speak, I've been to his exhibitions and pored over his numerous books. During his talks, I found him really engaging and I, I really liked him. Walking around a gallery with walls covered with bright colored images is mostly pleasant and paging through his books is an equally pleasant experience. So I'm not out to get Tillman's because I think he comes from a genuine place. I'm not convinced though by his work and whether it has any lasting value. I think if one is going to use the genius word, then it would apply to the marketing hype that has managed to sustain interest in this approach for three decades. If this concept underpinned, say, a once-off show, then I would say, well done, I've got the message. He was recently named by Time magazine as one of the 100 most influential people of 2023. His way of working, images without hierarchy in relation to each other in gallery spaces, has entered the lexicon of contemporary art so fully that it's actually easy to lose sight of where and when it began. And it began with Wolfgang Tillmans. What concerns me is that generations of art students will be influenced by this almost anti-photography sentiment. And in the future, we'll be bombarded by exhibitions consisting of arbitrary, unrelated images accompanied by deep, meaningful texts. They say that the camera never lies, but it can stretch the... Tillmans is an artist of his time. His early work focused on the LGBT plus community and also gender. He believes that his activist politics is inseparable from his art. He has a postmodern approach to photography in that all value judgments are seen as subjective. He makes a statement that if one thing matters, then everything matters. But if that's the case, then equally if one thing doesn't matter, then everything becomes meaningless. This is a perfect place, I think, to dig deep into what we're being told we should think about this work. On the one hand, it suggests that the work is a democratic gesture of inclusion. His exhibitions have been described as displays of visual democracy. I watch people walking around his exhibitions and you see a variety of reactions. Some are mesmerized by the jungle of unconnected imagery. It's a bit like being stuck inside an Instagram feed while a 14 year old scrolls through multiple sites. Others are confused as their brains are desperately trying to discover logic and meaning. Look, as I said, I get the conceptual idea behind the work. Eventually, one has to let go of the left brain compulsion to create order and just float through the experience because we're given nothing to hold on to. A writer from Aperture suggested that his work makes us feel safe and loved. So who's going to argue about that sentiment? We all want a bit more of those things. In a world that, at the moment, is unsure about the way forward, this open-ended vision seemingly has a uniting message. But beyond the niceness, we are being fed a particular political ideology, and we're being asked, admittedly nicely, to give up the idea of photographic merit. 
Call me old-fashioned, but I don't feel ready to let go of the idea of excellence. Without doubt, I feel moved by certain images more than others. When I gaze at a Robert Frank or a Stephen Shaw photograph, I feel the power that is being communicated. It's not that everyone should share my particular vision of excellence, it's just that individually we appreciate certain photographs above others. I don't think anyone can argue that a visit to a great art museum is comparable to viewing an exhibition of weekend artists. Somehow we are mysteriously moved by brilliance and true genius. A postmodernist might argue that we've been programmed by society to accept particular aesthetic standards. But all civilizations have revered certain artworks above others. Humans are always making choices and creating hierarchies, even when we decide what we're going to have for lunch. I want to be moved by art. With Tillman's work, I intellectually appreciate the installation concept, but I can't say that any particular image or series of images has stayed with me after I've left an exhibition. Just stop for a moment and think about the idea of visual democracy. Tillman's dismisses the idea of a photograph as an aesthetic object, but he also gets prickly when critics dismiss his work as shallow. Within his exhibitions dedicated to equality, some images are blown up huge while other small photographs are stuck to the wall with tape. And I've used three sizes, primarily three sizes of photographs now since 30 years. So there is a matrix and a pattern running through all my exhibitions of, of the last 30 years of um, um, the three main sizes and there's also the postcard size print. Um. Some appear again and again in his retrospective exhibitions. The installation style therefore suggests equality, but at the same time contradicts it. Huge sums of money have been paid for his popular images, and in the process, Tillman's has become rich and famous, thereby elevating him up the world's hierarchy of artists. So the nice words that are associated with this work don't in any way demonstrate that art or the art world is non-hierarchical. There is such a number of parallel interests that make up then the entirety of my work. What joins them is they have an immediacy uh, and can talk about what it feels like to be alive today. A lot happens through what I don't do. You know, it's not all about the doing, it's about what you don't do. The question of all the pictures you don't take, I mean, that is a very conscious decision. Art critics and writers also seem a little at sea with this work as they search for something to hold on to. They are forced to use word salads for their articles. Instead of democratizing art, they use complexity to disguise their vagueness. This is a good description that I saw. The evolving knowledge of the visible. Now, not sure what that means. Or how about this description of Tillman's by art critic Jerry Saltz. He uses terms like sublime and ecstatic vision and describes him as a visionary polymath. I had to look up what that one meant. It means a person of encyclopedic learning. The title of the exhibition, we build in the Future, is an open question, one that raises political, poetic and personal connotations. This exhibition of photography is an exploration of the work and the medium itself, but again links back to the theme of humanity. It was William Eggleston who first came up with the concept of the democratic forest of images. From some of the comments in my video on his work, I realized that there are many who see his photographs as uninspiring, so I'll tread carefully. The question becomes, what's the difference between these two photographers who direct their gaze towards the banal? I feel this question can only be answered on the feeling level. Eggleston said that he was at war with the obvious, and that's why I appreciate what he's achieved. I get a sense of his presence in the work and his appreciation of the mundane. It reflects an almost decadent pleasure in life. 
Well, with the Tillman's exhibition, I feel that there's an angle of evangelical persuasion. Preachy is a bit strong, but the work is undeniably political. Perhaps then for me, it's this secondary layer of messaging that blocks any connection to his photographs. Tillman's has won the Turner Prize, had an exhibition at the Tate Modern and at MoMA. So perhaps I'm missing something. In one of his exhibitions, he suggested that viewers should enter his work through their own eyes and through their own lives. So I've taken those words to heart. Thanks for watching and feel free to disagree and pull my arguments apart in the comments. I'll see you next time. I think what struck me about his work, and I hope you see it in it, is that it's both casual and exacting. It's bold, but also comforting. And it's, spon it's spontaneous, but it fits really well with art history, that kind of timelessness of art history. Tillman's participates, witnesses, and advocates, and continues to shape a new sense of what's beautiful, of what's pleasurable, of what's possible.